Innovation Anywhere has been the buzzword in today's RPA industry and is one of the most popular RPA tools. It attracts many experienced professionals who want to advance their career by a notch. So hi everyone, this is Sahiti on behalf of Edureka and I welcome you to this session on Automation Anywhere interview questions. So without any further ado, let's look into the topics for today's session. So we'll start today's session by looking into the market demand of Automation Anywhere and then I'll take you to the different types of interview questions. So for your better understanding, I have divided this interview questions into three sections. That is the basic interview questions, the tool based interview questions and the scenario based interview questions. So in each section, we're going to discuss different types of interview questions. So guys, I hope I'm clear with what we're going to discuss today. So let's get started with the market demand of automation anywhere. So as you can see on my screen, multinational companies such as Google, LinkedIn, Cisco, Dell, Genpact, Honeywell, IBM, HP, Infosys and many other companies use Automation Anywhere in their day-to-day -day tasks to automate simple to complex tasks. But the problem is not everybody has the knowledge of Automation Anywhere in depth. So if you're working for a company and if you want to scale your career as an RPA developer, then you need to have an understanding of different tools used in the RPA industry such as UiPath, Blue Prism and Automation Anywhere. So guys, I hope you know you have understood what is the importance of RPA developers in today's market. So in that note, obviously anybody who wants to scale their career as an RPA developer needs to have an understanding of various tools as I said before, right? So this session will focus on Automation Anywhere. So in this session on Automation Anywhere, as I previously told you, I'll be discussing the top questions that are asked in your interviews related to Automation Anywhere. So we'll start with the basic questions first. Well, this section of questions will consist of those basic questions that you need to understand related to robotic process automation and also the tool Automation Anywhere. So starting with the first question, the first question is what is the difference between Automation and RPA? Now, if you have to differentiate Automation and RPA, well, you can differentiate automation and RPA on various parameters. The parameters could be what does it reduce the need for programming knowledge, usage, what does it automate and what are the working environments. Talking about the first parameter, that is what does it reduce? Well, automation reduces the execution time and robotic process automation or RPA reduces the manual workforce. Coming to the need for programming knowledge, for automation, you do need programming knowledge to create test scripts. But coming to RPA, you do not actually need programming knowledge as it's mostly wizard driven. So basically you'll have a tool and then you'll have various functionalities in that tool to you know automate different tasks. So you do not actually need programming knowledge. Coming to usage parameters, on comparing automation and RPA on usage parameters, let me tell you that automation is used for quality analysis, production performance, user acceptance test environments and so on. And coming to RPA, RPA is mainly used in the production environments. Coming to the next parameter that is what does it automate? So automation basically automates the repetitive test cases that is a product and RPA automates repetitive business processes that is products as well as business. Now coming to the final parameter that is what are the working environments for automation and RPA? So for automation there are limited working environments and for RPA there are a wide range of environments. So on comparing automation and RPA, automation basically reduces execution time Programming knowledge is required to create test scripts. It's mainly used for quality analysis, production performance, user acceptance test environments and automates repetitive test cases that is basically a product and is also mainly used in limited working environments. Coming to RPA, RPA reduces manual workforce. The programming knowledge is not much needed as it's you know wizard driven. It's mostly used in production environments. It automates repetitive business processes that is basically the products as well as business and works on wide range of environments. So guys, these were the differences between automation and RPA. Now moving on to the next question that is what is robotic process automation? So if you have to understand what is robotic process automation, then it's really simple. Robotic process automation is basically the process of automating tasks with the help of softwares or tools to deploy boats, which reduce the involvement of humans to perform any task. So over here, if you look at the term robotic process automation, then there are mainly three terms that you need to understand. That is robotic process and automation. So let me just explain you each one of them one by one. So starting with robotic, robotic are basically any entities which mimic human actions. So any entities which mimic human actions basically are known as robots and with the help of these boats, you can automate any task. Coming to process, process is basically a sequence of steps which lead to a meaningful activity. 
So for example, if you want to make copy, then you follow a proper process, right? So that is what basically processes. So basically robots follow this process to automate a task and finally coming to automation as the term suggests automation is basically any process which is done by a robot without any human intervention. Now if we summarize all these three terms together then mimicking human actions to perform a sequence of steps that lead to a meaningful activity without any human intervention is said to be robotic process automation. Now moving on to the next question that is what is the difference between UI path blue prism and automation anywhere. So basically these three tools are the most popular tools in the RPA industry. Now if we have to compare these three tools based on various parameters then let me start with UI path first. UiPath basically offers a community edition or a free edition which you can use for a lifetime. So you can keep using that edition until you know you get a good experience in the tool. Coming to Automation Anywhere, Automation Anywhere has recently launched a community edition. Now, apart from the community edition, it also has an enterprise edition with a 30 day trial, right? So you can go for the community edition, which is again free for the lifetime. And then there's also an enterprise edition similar to that of UiPath. And finally coming to blue prism blue prism has no free edition. Basically it offers no trial version. So you'll have to pay money get the license version and then you can start automating tasks in blue prism coming to the Google Trends popularity basically which tool is popular more. So I'll say that you know UI path is the most popular tool. So on the popularity basis it's clear that you know UI path wins to competition but it's never a do as you know automation anywhere has also recently launched a community edition. So you never know the tables can turn and automation anywhere can also become one of the most popular tools coming to the programming knowledge UiPath doesn't require much coding as you know it's all based on activity. So for example if you want to use a for loop then you have a for activity you just have to drag and drop it in your sequence and then you can start using it coming to automation anywhere automation anywhere also doesn't require programming knowledge as you have activities to use for each and every functionality. So when I say activities over here, I basically mean commands that I'll show you later in the session how you can just you know drag and drop the commands into your sequence and automate tasks. And finally coming to blue prism blue prism basically has a functionality which allows the user to write code. But yes, users can also manage without it. So coming to programming knowledge all the three tools almost do not require programming knowledge as each and every tool has its own functionality to cater the needs. Coming to the training programs UiPath has free online training and certification programs and Automation Anywhere has also recently launched a certification for $50 and Blue Prism also offers an official certification program. So all the three tools make sure that you know the users can learn get certified in it and upscale their careers. And finally coming to the usage of these tools UiPath is basically used to provide desktop web and Citrix automation automation anywhere is reasonable across all the mediums and blue prism is mainly designed for Citrix automation for business process outsourcing. So guys these were the differences between UiPath blue prism and automation anywhere. Now moving on to the next question that is can automation anywhere be used for testing the agile method. Well the answer is yes. We can definitely use automation anywhere for testing the agile methodology such as in the case of continuous integration. So if you don't have an idea of continuous integration I'll leave the link of the video in the description box and then you can understand what continuous integration is. However you cannot use automation anywhere when you have a complex documentation and when there is no need for frequently changing the needs of agile testing right. So you can use automation anywhere definitely for testing the agile methodology but in the case of continuous integration. But yes, if you come to the case when you have complex documentations and then there is no need of frequent changing, it's not advisable that you know you use automation anywhere over there. Now moving on to the next question that is is robotic process automation like screen scraping or macros. Now this is one of the most popular confusions that people all the time have that you know is robotic process automation only respective to screen scraping or you know doing simple tasks. Well, let me clear your confusion and tell you that you know the answer is no. So robotic process automation is basically a generation from old technologies like screen scraping or macros. So the major differences between the robotic automation and the screen scraping or macros is basically that the robots are universal application orchestrators and any application that can be used by a man can be used by present day robot whether you know it's a mainframe application or a desktop application or a legacy application or even web service enabled or even if it is a close third party API hosted service. Robots basically assemble procedural knowledge which after some time joins with a shared library that can be reused by some other robots or devices. 
So applications are read by the robots either through submitted APIs where they exist through the operating systems before the application appears or through the screen with respect to the native application. In this last case, the modern robot reads an application screen in context as the same way the user does, right? So as part of the robot training, it is shown how to read an application display much like a user is shown. So basically robotic automation is not like screen scraping or macros as robots are intelligent enough and they can see the data as a user can see and obviously they can be reused for any other applications or services. Now moving on to the next question that is what is the difference between RPA and Selenium? Now this is also one of the most popular confusions that mostly arises between RPA and Selenium as both of them automate tasks. Well, let me just clear the confusion for you guys. So we'll compare RPA and Selenium based on various parameters. So starting with automation, RPA basically automates business processes whereas Selenium automates browser applications. So you can't automate everything with Selenium. Basically, you can't automate different kinds of applications like, you know, if it's not a browser application, then you cannot automate with the help of Selenium. But yes, you can automate with the help of RPA. Moving on to the next parameter that is availability. RPA has various tools in its industry with the help of which you can automate tasks. So the most popular tools, as I said before, are UiPath, Blue Prism and Automation Anywhere. And UiPath and Automation Anywhere have free trial versions, whereas Blue Prism has licensed versions. Coming to Selenium, then Selenium is open source. Moving on to the next parameter, that is, where is the task performed? Well, in RPA, the task is performed at the back end of the process, and in Selenium, it is performed on the on current browser page. Coming to the next parameter, that is, the major components used. RPA mainly uses the RPA boards, and in the case of Selenium, the Selenium web drivers are used. Coming to the next parameter, that is the level of automation. RPA basically automates the low value clerical processes and Selenium automates no clerical processes. Coming to life cycle, then the life cycle of RPA is simple and easy and Selenium is relatively difficult when compared to RPA. Coming to platform dependency, then RPA is platform independent and Selenium is basically browser platform dependent. Next, coming to programming knowledge. So for RPA, you do not actually need programming knowledge, but for Selenium, you do need programming knowledge. And finally, coming to the skills required, then the skills required in RPA are SQL databases, analytical skills, problem solving ability, managing data, and the knowledge of RPA tools. And coming to Selenium, then the knowledge of Selenium ID is required to create a test suit. Now moving on to the next question, that is, what do you know about automation anywhere? So as I said before, Automation Anywhere is an RPA tool whose motive is to provide its users with scalable, secure and resilient services. This tool has recently launched a community edition to let you first explore the tool and automate tasks and then it also provides with an enterprise version with which you can automate tasks at an enterprise level. So Automation Anywhere also offers better performance as it has the ability to integrate with different platforms and also scale simultaneously. So this tool is meant to be used at an enterprise level, I would say, and is mainly designed for solving complex issues. So if you have to summarize automation anywhere, then you can just say it's a summation of robotic process automation plus cognitive automation plus workforce analytics, which is nothing but automation anywhere. So you can just summarize automation anywhere in this way. Now let's move forward with the next question that is, can you explain about the architecture of automation anywhere? Coming to the architecture of Automation Anywhere, Automation Anywhere follows a distributed architecture. So through this architecture, Automation Anywhere makes sure that you know it has centralized management which is accomplished through the Automation Anywhere control room. So the architecture of tool is mainly segregated into three components that is the bot creators, the bot runners and the control room. So as you can see on my screen, the bot creators and the bot runners are basically connected to the control room and control room is the brain of Automation Anywhere. So let's just discuss each of these components one by one, starting with bot creators. So bot creators, as the name suggests, are used to create bots. These are basically desktop based applications which authenticate against an active control room and only have an access to upload or download the boards. On configuring these boards for the control room, multiple developers can also create individual tasks or boards and can execute all of them at once. Coming to control room, control room is the most important component of this architecture. It's a web server that basically controls the boards created by the bot creators and as Automation Anywhere focuses on the centralized management with the help of Control Room, 
The control room offers features such as centralized user management, automation deployment, source control, and also provides a dashboard. Coming to bot runners, the bot runners are used to execute the bots. So multiple bots can be executed in parallel and cannot update or create an automation. So they basically runtime clients which are installed on the Windows machines and can report back the execution log status to the control room. So if you summarize all these three components together, then once a developer creates a task or a boards and updates on the control room, the control room can hereby schedule and execute these boards on the bot runners based on the requirements of priority. So guys, that was about the architecture of automation anyway. Now let's move forward with our next question that is what are the different types of boards and when are they used in automation anyway? So there are mainly three different types of boards in automation anyway. That is the IQ boards, the task boards and the meta boards. Talking about the IQ bots first, the IQ bots allow the developers to add cognitive capabilities to the process. So it uses cognitive capabilities to extract information from semi and unstructured data and also detects patterns so that the next time the pattern is encountered, the bot already knows what exactly has to be done. Coming to task bots, the task bots are the core of automation. So these bots execute repetitive rule based tasks that rely on structured data and are easy to build. They can execute multi step processes around the clock with no errors. Coming to the final bot, that is the meta bots. The meta bots have the capability of integrating dynamic link library that is the DLL that can be used for backend automation. It includes GUI components which are used for the front end automation and maximizes multi level integration to automate business processes along with the task boards. So this was about the different bots in automation anyway. There are mainly three types of bots in automation anyway that is the IQ bots, task bots and meta bots. So the IQ bots allow the developers to add cognitive capabilities. Task bots are basically the core of automation and coming to the meta bots. The meta bots have the capability of integrating dynamic link library that can be used for the backend automation. Now coming to the next question that is what are the different types of recorders in automation anyway? So there are mainly four recorders in automation anyway. That is the screen recorder, the smart recorder, the web recorder and the task editor. Coming to the screen recorder first. The screen recorder or the other standard recorder provides the easiest way to create a simple automation process. It is usually used when the task involves many mouse click and keyboard operations. Coming to the smart recorder, the smart recorder or the object recorder is the most feasible method for building tasks. It is ideal for desktop applications and captures objects such as drop down menus, list boxes, radio buttons, check boxes and mouse clicks. Coming to the web recorder, the web recorder is used to perform tasks that require repetitive actions such as extracting data from multiple web pages, extracting data from tables on the web pages and also filling the web forms. Coming to the task editor, the task editor is used to process any command with the help of several commands. This editor allows you to open multiple tasks by editing them simultaneously and the task editor has components such as commands panel, task action list, the action buttons, error view and variable manager panel. So guys, these were the various recorders in automation anyway. That is the screen recorder, the smart recorder, the web recorder and the task editor. Now moving on to the next question that is mentioned few benefits of automation anyway. So the benefits of automation anyway are as you can see on my screen. So the benefits are mainly it navigates different digital landscapes. It's built for complexity. It is made for enterprise. It provides easy programming. It's easy for integration and also offers quick deployment. So when I say navigates different digital landscapes, I mean that automation anywhere adjusts itself to the movement of icons, buttons and user generated events. Coming to complexity, this tool completes processes and automates the tasks which would require thousand lines of code to automate. Coming to made for enterprise, it is deployed throughout an enterprise so that multiple departments can focus on processes that require human intervention. So when I say easy for programming, I mean that you know it supports the front end and does not involve complex programming. So even any non IT professionals can work on this tool definitely and coming to the next benefit that is easy integration. So this tool can be easily integrated with other systems and is platform independent. So you can integrate this tool with any platform that you wish to and finally coming to quick deployment automation anywhere provides features like drag and drop and also has a friendly interface with the help of which it offers quick deployment. So guys these were the various benefits of automation anywhere. Now moving on to the next question that is what do you mean by Sikuli? So Sikuli is a tool which can be utilized for automating the web components that is basically the graphical UI. It uses the API which can be utilized and can be incorporated into various systems. So 
So for example, Windows based applications can be computerized with the assistance of Sikuli. So that's what Sikuli is guys. It's just a tool which can be utilized for automating the web components. Now moving on to the next question that is what are the different automation frameworks in the field of software automation testing. So there are mainly five frameworks that you need to understand about that is the linear scripting framework the data driven framework the modular testing framework the keyword driven framework and the hybrid testing framework coming to the linear scripting framework. It is a basic level test automation framework which is in the form of record and playback but in a linear fashion. This type of framework is mostly used to test small sized applications. Coming to data driven framework. The data driven framework is used to create test automation scripts by passing different sets of test data. So the test data which includes the input expected output and the result field are stored in the files like CSV files, Excel files, text files, XML files and so on. Coming to modular testing framework. In the modular testing framework the testers divide the application into multiple small modules and create test scripts individually. So these individual test scripts are combined to make large test scripts by using a master script to achieve the required scenarios. Coming to the keyword driven framework in this framework testers use a table format to define keywords or action words for each method. So based on the keywords specified in the Excel sheet test scripting is done and tests are executed. And finally coming to hybrid testing framework as the name suggests this framework is a combination of two or more frameworks mentioned above. It attempts to leverage the strengths and benefits of other frameworks based on the testers requirement. So guys these were the various automation testing frameworks present in the field of automation testing. That is the linear scripting framework the data driven framework the modular testing framework the keyword driven framework and the hybrid testing framework. Now moving on to the next question that is what are the features of the automation anywhere client. So the features of automation anywhere client are as you can see on my screen that is basically logging scheduling tasks. Setting general properties using filters, setting hotkeys, debugging tasks, and adding triggers. Starting with login, you can use the log to file command to create a log file in which task bot or a meta bot information can be stored. Coming to scheduling tasks, Automation Anywhere provides a scheduler and a scheduler manager that can use to run your task anytime and any way that you want. Coming to setting general properties, you can view and edit the task general properties by using the general tab. Coming to the next feature that is using filters. Well, you can use the filters bar to manage the long task. Now, coming to the next feature that is setting hotkeys. One of the distinguishing benefits of automating your task with automation anywhere is the ability to launch a task with the press of single key. Moving on to the next feature that is debugging a task. Automation anywhere provides a facility that enables you to debug complex and long automation tasks. And finally, coming to the last feature that is adding triggers. The trigger feature enables a task to run automatically in response to an event that occurs on your computer. So for example, you can use the trigger when a new window opens or a specific file is created. So guys, these were the various features of Automation Anywhere client. Now moving on to the next question that is what do you think are the reasons for not considering manual testing in Automation Anywhere approach? Well, the reasons for not considering manual testing and automation anywhere approach are basically because you know humongous amount of time is required to do the process manually. It requires a lot of additional processes and the processes can also be error prone. So you know it reduces the accuracy. So whenever the task or the projects are large and have a time constraint then I would say using manual testing for automation anywhere is not a wise option as it would decrease the performance of resources and would also definitely reduce the accuracy. So guys these were the various reasons for not considering manual testing in an automation anywhere approach. So guys with this we come to an end of the section of basic interview questions in this session. I hope you've understood all the questions. Now moving on to the next set of questions that is the tool based questions. Now this section of the session will basically consist of those questions that are mainly related to the tool. So basically you can understand you know these questions will be related to the working of the tool. So let's just get started with this section of questions. So starting with the first question in this section that is what is the difference between the wait and the delay commands. Now the major difference between the wait and the delay command relies on the parameter on when you want to use the command. So basically the wait command is used when you might want to wait for the components on the screen or the screen itself to change and coming to the delay command the delay command on the other hand is basically used when you're working on loops to enhance the performance of actions in a task. So this is basically the difference between the wait command and the delay command. The difference mainly relies on when you want to use the command. The wait command as I said before is used when you want to wait for the components to change in the screen or the screen itself to change and the delay command is used when you're working on loops. 
So guys, this is the main difference between these two commands. Now moving on to the next question, that is, what are the commands used for error handling in automation anywhere? So there are mainly two commands which can be used to handle errors and also debug them. That is, begin error handling and end error handling. So these are mainly two commands that are used in error handling. Well, apart from these two options, that is, the begin error handling and the end error handling commands. There are also various other actions that you can perform with the help of these two commands that is take snapshot run tasks log data into file send email and variable assignment talking about taking snapshot with this feature you can take a snapshot of the screen of any error coming to run task this feature is used to run any task when the current task faces an error coming to log data into file this feature is basically used to log the errors into a file coming to send an email this feature is used to send an email when an error happens and coming to variable assignment this feature is used to specify a value to be assigned and set tasks depending on the action so guys these were the commands used for error handling in automation anywhere that is the begin error handling and end error handling with n number of features to let you perform different actions moving on to the next question that is what do you understand by predefined variables in automation anywhere so the predefined variables are basically the system variables that are provided by the automation anywhere to automate tasks. The different predefined variables are as you can see on my screen. That is the date and time loop Excel email trigger PDF and system. So guys, these are the various system variables that are used in automation anywhere. Now to check the predefined variables. What you can do is you just have to go to the variable manager on the right side of the task pane. Click on the show system variables and it will open all the system variables for you. For your better understanding, I'm going to show you how you can see the system variables and then I'm also going to show you how you can use those predefined variables. What I'm going to do is first I'm going to shift to my automation anywhere client. So this is my automation anywhere client guys. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to new choose workbench. Then this is how my workspace looks like. So to check the system variables, what you can do is you have to go to the variable manager. So this is the variable manager and then you can go to show system variables. So as I clicked on show system variables as you can see on my screen. These are the various system variables that are already predefined in your workspace. Now to use these system variables. I'm going to automate a simple task and show you how you can use these variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the predefined variable clipboard over here, right? All right. So what I will do is I'll go to new and I'll choose web recorder. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mention my URL. So I'm going to mention the URL for our blog page. So that's HTTPS colon slash slash www dot edureka dot co slash blog. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to click on start. So basically when you click on start, you'll see that you know the web recorder has started. So while recording your task, you have to make sure that you know you wait for the page to load completely. So I'm going to click on OK over here and then you will see that you know our edureka domain has opened. Now what you have to do is you have to choose this option of extract data from the bottom corner that you can see on my screen and then I'll choose either regular data or pattern based data. So I'll want to choose regular data. I'll click on next and then I'll choose what data has to be extracted. So I want the BI and visualization term to be extracted. So I'll click over here and then you can see that you know BI and visualization has been extracted. Now what you can do is you can select a variable so that you know the control value can be stored to a variable. So I'm going to choose the clipboard variable and then I'll click on save. So once I click on save, you can see that you know it has been extracted. Now what can I do is I can just stop the recording and then I can just go back to my task. I'll save this task as let's say you know sample variable. I'll click on save. Now I'm just going to edit this task again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to display a message box so that you know you can see the output. So I'm going to search for message box over here. I'm going to drag and drop it over here and over here I'll press on control F2 and choose the clipboard variable, right? So you can see the clipboard variable is inserted and then I'll click on save. Now I'll again click on save to save the task and then I'll click on run. So when I click on run, you can see that you know my task is getting executed. The data is getting extracted and finally a message box would be displayed, right? So we'll wait for that action to happen and you can see that you know the message box displays an output of BI and visualization, right? So that's how guys you can use the predefined variables for any type of automation. Well, when an interviewer asks you what and how the predefined variables are, please don't stick to the theory language and please don't stick to what are its features. 
Instead, I would say you can answer by, you know, showing them simple demos or talking about steps through which you can just use these predefined variables in different scenarios of automating a task. So guys, that was about the predefined variables. Now let's move forward with our next question. That is what are the different ways to schedule a task? So there are mainly two different ways to schedule a task that is either by using the scheduler or by using the schedule manager. So starting with you know the scheduler. So to schedule a task using the scheduler, you have to select the task that you want to schedule. Click on the schedule tab on the main automation anywhere window and then set the scheduling information for time and date. And finally you can click on save. This is how you can schedule a task for a scheduler and coming to schedule manager. In the main automation anywhere window click on the schedule manager tab on the lower left side or you know you can also go to tools and go to schedule manager in the menu tab. So let me just show you that if I just want to schedule a task. Let's just say if I want to schedule a task of sample variable. What you can do is you can go to schedule over here and then you can select you know a schedule that is either a one time only or maybe you want it to repeat. I am choosing over here one time only and then you can mention the start time start date and click on save. So this will basically schedule the task for you and this is how you can use the scheduler. Now coming to schedule manager. Now to use the schedule manager what you can do is you can go to schedules over here and then we'll wait for it to load and once it loads you can just schedule the task from this point. So as you can see this is the schedule manager. So over here you can mention the day, the week, the month basically when you want to start, how many times do you want to repeat and then you can keep adding the schedules by using the add option. So guys, that's how you can schedule task in automation anywhere. There are mainly two options that is the schedule manager and the schedule. Now moving on to the next question that is how to automate Windows tasks using actions in automation anywhere. So to automate Windows task using actions in automation anywhere. What you can do is you have to choose the Windows actions activity from the activity pane. Now there are obviously various actions that you can perform with the window either you can resize it or you know you can get an active window title or maybe you can just you know maximize the window minimize the window or close the window or maybe you can also open a window right. So for example if you want to resize a window what you can do is you have to click on the capture button and draw a rectangle around the desired dimensions of the window using the mouse and after that you can just save the task and execute it. You would see that you know your window has been resized. Similarly, if you want to get the active window title, what you can do is you can just get the active window title and assign it to a variable and then you can just save your task and execute that task so that you know you can see that the active window title has been extracted. So for your better understanding, let me just show you how that is done. So I'll shift back to my automation anyway and then what I'll do is I'll click on new. I'll choose workbench and let's say you know we create a new task. To choose the Windows actions, you have to actually search for Windows actions activity on the left side of the pane. So for example, let's say you know I want to resize the window. So I'll drag and drop it into the workspace and then I'll select the window. So it could be any of them. So let's say you know I'm resizing this Internet Explorer window that has been opened and then you can just click on capture and draw a rectangle to retrieve the dimensions of the window. So I'm going to do that. So let me make sure that is my next step and then I'm going to capture. So let's say you know we capture till here. And then I'll click on save. Once I click on save, I'll click on save over here. I'll execute the task. So I'll save my task again. So let's say this is resizing window. And then I'll click on save. And then I'll just run this task. So when I run this task, you can see that you know the window size has been resized, right? So that's how guys it's really simple to use this windows actions where I just showed you for resizing a window. You can use other options like you know activate close maximize minimize and also get the active window title. So guys that was about this question. Now let's move forward with our next question that is what is the process of using an OCR command for image recognition. Now OCR is something really popular that is used in the industries on day to day basis and it's obvious that you know you should know the answer for this question. So basically the process for using an OCR command for image recognition is as you can see on my screen. The step one is to specify an image which can be a window also. The step two is to select the OCR engine. By default it is Tesseract and set a threshold amount to determine the OCR accuracy. And the third step is to assign the extracted text value to a variable so that you know you can see the output either in a message box or you can store it in a file. So guys these are the various steps of using the OCR command for image recognition that starts with specifying an image and then selecting the OCR engines and then mentioning the threshold amount and then finally assigning the extracted text value to a variable. So guys this was the process of using the OCR command for image recognition. Now let's move forward with our next question that is how to copy an Excel cell and move to the next cell in your record. 
So to copy an Excel cell and to move to the next cell in the record, you can first copy the data into the cell using the keystrokes as you can see on my screen. That is F2, Home, Shift Down, and Shift Up, Control Down, Control O. And then you can move the cursor to the next cell after copying the data into the present cell using the keystroke Enter plus Tab. So basically, you guys, you can use the keystrokes to copy an Excel cell and move to the next cell in your record after mentioning the data into this present cell. So guys, that was about this question. Now let's move forward with our next question. That is how to create timestamps for your files using automation anywhere system variables. The system variables are basically the predefined variables in automation anywhere and under the date and the time field. The most popular system variables are the year month day are minute second and date. Now basically you can combine these variables to create a timestamp of your own choice. So for example, if you want to append the year month date at the end of the word example, you can write the command as you know example dollar year dollar dollar month dollar dollar day and dollar. Now if you want to include the text characters between the variables, what you can simply do is you can mention example dollar year dollar colon dollar month dollar colon dollar day dollar. So basically colon is the text character that I want to include between the variables. Now apart from this if you want to create a complete timestamp with date and time you can just write example dollar year dollar dollar month dollar dollar day dollar dollar hours dollar dollar minutes dollar dollar seconds and dollar. So that's how guys you can create timestamps for your files using automation anyway system variables. You mainly have to use the year month day variables so that you can create them. So just in case if you want to configure the format of the date variable then you can just go to tools variable manager system variable and date. Now moving on to the next question that is how to paste data in an application and move to the next item. Well to paste data in an application and move to the next item you have to follow the process that is mentioned on the screen. That is first is to identify an element which you wish to copy and use the keystroke that is control down plus control up. Then after that you have to move to the next item using the tab key to move from the highlighted item to the next item. And finally you have to use the right arrow to move to the next cell in the same row but a different column of a table. So guys that's how you can paste data in an application and move to the next item. Now one more thing that I would like to tell over here is that you know some applications also support using the space bar to move to the next control or the button. So it's completely based on your application. So that's how you can paste the data in an application and move to the next item. Now moving on to the next question that is how to use the string operation command in automation anywhere. Well you can use the string operation command in automation anywhere to perform various actions like you know comparing two strings joining two strings finding the length of a string reversing a string either cutting a string that is basically trimming a string or finding before and after a string or you can you know make the string to lowercase or change it to uppercase. You can also replace the string split the string and you can also find a substring from a string. Basically guys these are the various operations that you can perform with the string command. So for your better understanding I'm going to shift to my automation anywhere client and I'm going to show you how you can compare two strings. So let me just shift back to my automation anywhere client. Now I'll again add a new task. Now in this new task what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for string operation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare these two strings. So for that I'm going to assign variables with a specific string so that you know we can use those variables in the coming up task. So I'm going to go to the variable manager choose add. And then I'm going to create a variable. Let's say string one and let's say we mention the value as high from Edureka and click on save. Similarly, I'm going to add the second variable. So I'll mention it string two. I'll say welcome from Edureka. Right. I'll click on save. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop the compare string operation into the workspace and then in the string one I'm going to press on control F2 and mention the variable string one. And in the string 2, I'm going to again press on control F2 and mention the variable string 2. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the output to a variable. So I'm going to use a predefined variable over here. So I'm going to use the clipboard variable and then I'll click on save. Once I click on save, what I'll do is I'll use the message box to display the output. So I'm going to search for message box. And then I'll press on control F2 and choose clipboard. And then I'll click on save. Once I click on save, I'll again save my task. So let's say we mention it compare strings. And then I'm going to just execute this task. All right. So as you can see, the output is false. That is because, you know, the first string was high from Edureka and the second string was welcome from Edureka. So these two strings are two different strings. So the output is false. Else, if, you know, the two strings were same, then the output would come as true. So, guys, that's how you can use the string operation command in automation anywhere. 
So I just explained you with one simple example. You can obviously impress the interviewer with complex examples related to strings. Now moving on to the next question that is what are the system variables current directory folder name and file name mean? Well, the system variables current directory folder name and file name basically are used with commands for loop for folders in a folder or loop for files in a folder. So basically if you consider a command in the task loop for folders in a folder here basically the folder is the specified folder on which the loop will execute. So it basically needs a full part which has to be available for execution time and that you can provide by using the current directory. Similarly if the folder has n number of folders then the loop will be executed n times. So basically when you use the folder name variable each time the folder name variable will have the next folders name inside the specified folder. And now if the task consists of the command loops for file in a folder then the file name will represent the next file name inside the specified folder. So outside the loop the current directory the folder name and the file name actually do not have much usage. But yes inside these loops they do have a good amount of usage when you're designing a large complicated task. So guys this was about the system variables current directory folder name and file name. Now let's move forward with our next question that is when are triggers used in automation anywhere. Well the triggers are used in automation anywhere to launch the manager by clicking on the triggers in the main window to add delete or edit the triggers provided by the features and to enable or disable the triggers. So these are mainly the three usages of triggers that is to launch the manager by clicking on the triggers in the main window to add delete or edit triggers provided by the features and to enable or disable the triggers. Now moving on to the next question that is mention the command to launch a website. Well the command to launch a website is the launch website activity. So you simply have to drag the launch website activity and then mention the URL and then you can check in the box if you wish to open the website in the new tab of the existing window or the new window. So let me just show you the same. So I'll shift again to my automation anywhere client. I'll click on new make a new task and then I'll search for launch website. Right so this is my launch website activity. I'll drag and drop over here. So I'll just mention my URL over here. Let's say we mentioned edureka domain. So that's www edureka.co and then over here you can check in the box you know either to open the URL in the existing Internet Explorer window or to open the URL in the new tab. So I'm going to choose the option of open the URL in existing Internet Explorer window and then I'll click on save. I'll just save the task again. Let's say we mentioned the task name to be launching a website. And then I'll click on run. So the URL that I mentioned in the launch website activity has opened in our Internet Explorer. So guys this was about you know how you can launch a website. Well this question was kind of important because you know this type of questions can be used to just to check your knowledge about the tool. So this was just one command that I mentioned about. Well there could be n number of commands that you can be tested about like you know how, where do you use the PDF integration or when do you use the Excel automation commands and what are the different commands inside the Excel automation activity and so on. Now moving forward with our next question that is how can we read CSV files through automation anywhere? Well to read the CSV file in an automation anywhere you first have to open the file right? So to open a CSV file or a text file you have to provide the file location of the file in the activity open file and then you have to use the read CSV file or the text file command to read the CSV file. Now moving forward with our next question that is is it possible to read PDFs through automation anywhere? Well this is quite an obvious answer that you know it is definitely possible to read the PDFs through automation anywhere. The command used is basically the PDF integration command. So this command is used to read PDF of single or multiple pages extract values merge two documents and many more. If you go to the PDF integration command then you have various commands under it such as PDF to image extract form fields extract text merge documents split document encrypt document and decrypt the document. So guys that was about this question. Now let's move forward with our next question that is can you brief about PGP? Well PGP is used to encrypt or decrypt the files or create keys by assigning the passphrase. So if someone asks you what is PGP then PGP is also a command or an activity in automation anyway that is used to encrypt or decrypt the files or create keys by assigning the passphrase. Now moving forward to the next question that is which commands are not recommended to use if the application offers full support of objects for automation and is local. Well the commands which are not recommended to use are the insert mouse click the insert mouse scroll and the insert mouse move. This is mainly because you know these commands are related to the mouse click actions 
and if an application offers full support for objects for automation and is local then it can obviously happen that you know the objects can change so it's not recommended to use these actions of insert mouse click mouse scroll and mouse move now let's move forward with our next question that is what is the best way to open an application as part of a task in automation anywhere well there are mainly two ways to open an application as a part of task in automation anywhere that is either by double clicking the application icon on the desktop where you want to record the task or by clicking on the start menu then go to programs and then selecting the application now just in case if the location of these icons change then it will definitely result in an error when you're trying to execute the task so to avoid errors you can follow the steps that you can see on my screen that is firstly you open the task in the task editor and then select the actions which might involve several mouse clicks and moves then delete those actions and replace them with single line commands so here you'll basically use the open file command and specify the path of the application and then the task will now open an application regardless of where the icon is located so that's how you can avoid the error guys now moving forward with our next question that is how to resolve the problem of not able to view the run button in automation anywhere well to resolve the problem of not able to view the run button in automation anywhere you can follow the steps that you can see on my screen you can request the create task permissions from your server administrator to procure adequate permissions then the administrator will grant the create task privilege using the enterprise control room in the client control center using the client information section and for upload download delete and view privileges for a particular folder on the server you can request the access control list permissions from an enterprise control room after that the access control list is updated in the client control center and the create task privilege is granted and the client must re log in so with the steps that i just explained you the client should be now able to communicate with the server using the new privileges that's how you can resolve the problem of not able to view the run button in the automation anywhere now moving forward with our next question that is how to set an email setting in smtp server in automation anywhere well to set the email in smtp server in automation anywhere you have to go to the client room that is basically your client server and then go to tools in the tools you will find an option of email notifications over there you'll have to fill in the details such as the host name port number user id password and then you'll be all good to do email automation right so that's how you can set your details for emails and smtp server so let me just show you in my automation anywhere client so i'll go back go to tools over here and then what i'll do is i'll go to options over here and in the options you'll find an option for email setting so in the email settings you'll have to mention the host and the port number and then you can click on okay and that's how you're good to go for email automation so guys with this we come to an end of our tool based questions So I hope you have understood all the questions and I hope it was clear to you guys till now. Now next in this session we'll move forward with our scenario based questions. So the scenario based questions will basically consist of different scenarios where you can use automation anywhere and how you can automate different tasks. All right, so let's start with the first question. Now consider a scenario wherein you had to query the system for new orders manually and validate the order purchased to apply the relevant prices and discount. Now obviously this procedure seems to be quite tedious and time taking and prone to errors right as you know manual workforce has to constantly log into the system and then they have to validate the process enter the data again and then they also have to apply the discounts right now what do you think will be the process workflow to resolve this issue with automation anywhere well you can answer this question by just imagine just drawing a workflow in your mind and then you know you can explain the interview your workflow So the flow that can be created for automation can be as you can see on my screen the system can first extract the data from the customer database and then check for the new purchase order then once a purchase order gets downloaded it is immediately pushed into the legacy systems after that an agent can keep an eye on the process and manually validate the order for maintaining accuracy and finally automation anywhere can be used to upload the purchase into a database and then the discounts can be automatically applied Later on the agents can cross check the fulfilled order and ensure quality control. So guys this was the workflow that can be used to resolve this issue with automation anywhere. Now moving on to the next scenario, let's consider a scenario of a company which provides banking services to customers in many countries. Now the company's main focus is to develop virtual workforce that combines cognitive analytic human and robotic capabilities to enhance the customer experience and simultaneously automate monotonous tasks and also increase the efficiency now how do you think will the company achieve its goals well the answer to this question is obviously by using an rpa tool and i would say by using automation anywhere so by using automation anywhere the company can automate hundreds of processes with the help of bots 
This would increase the efficiency of automating back office processes and also reduce the time for serving customers. This is how the company can achieve its goal. It's just that you know, they have to use an RPA tool. So here I would say they can use automation anywhere and then they can automate hundreds of tasks with the help of bots. Now moving on to the next question. Consider a scenario where a multinational company is facing challenges such as maintaining regular compliance as you know they do not have the ability to maintain the role based access control as every different type of users have different levels of access. Now also consider the fact that you know the firm has just migrated from basic robotic process automation to machine learning and optical character recognition technologies. Now how do you think the firm can resolve this issue of maintaining the regular compliance? Well to resolve such issue the company can use the bot inside product of automation anywhere as you know the bot inside is designed to create role based access controls for each category of user and can also give the company the visibility into overall bot life cycle. So with the help of this the company can have strategic planning and also allow the company to meet standards in the market. So basically the company can resolve this issue by using the bot inside from automation anywhere. Now moving on to the next scenario. For this question consider a scenario where an employee has to deal with unsatisfied customers. Now in a company like you know Swiggy or Zomato there might be situations you know where the team of Swiggy and Zomato have to deal with hundreds of unsatisfied customers all over the world at same instance of time. Now how do you think the company can reduce the load of manual workforce to handle so many unsatisfied customers together? Well to reduce the load of manual workforce you have to design bots and automation anywhere to suggest questions for an agent which can be asked to the customer and also gather information simultaneously. So with the help of cognitive capabilities the bot can then further give recommendations for the next best actions to be taken. So in such a way the bot can make sure that you know the employee provides a better service and can also keep the interaction with the customer aligned to the guidelines of the company. So it's really simple guys what they have to simply do is so they have to design bots and automation anyway in such a way that you know the, the bot can suggest questions for the agent and also gather the information from the customer right. So for example the delivery is getting too late. So the reasons could be either the delivery boy is not getting allotted or you know it's raining outside and the network is a problem or the reason could be that you know the customer cannot contact the delivery boy and so on right. So in such a scenario the bot should be intelligent enough in such a way that you know it can suggest the apt questions to the agent. So you can refer to the flowchart that you can see in my screen so that you understand how with the help of automation anyway you can reduce the load of manual workforce. So basically as the customer attends the call the bots gets triggered and then the bot collects data from the customer database. Once the data is collected from the previous customer database the employee checks for the generated results and then the bot provides recommendations for the best actions. So basically based on the previous customer data and what the customer is saying presently the bot provides recommendations for the best actions and then prompts for a confirmation for the action to be executed or not. If the action is to be executed then the agent takes over that question and passes on to the customer and then that's how the conversation keeps on going. So that's how the task ends also guys. So guys this is how you know you can reduce the load on manual workforce to handle many unsatisfied customers together. Now let's move forward with our next question. Now consider a health insurance company which aims to automate its back office processes with a tool which fits easily into the design of organization and provides an ease of deployment with the client application architecture. Now how do you think the company can automate its back office process with the help of the tool? Well according to me a health insurance company must focus on automating mainly three tasks that is the member enrollment process the test to check commercial claims and build healthcare products. Coming to the member enrollment process. If previously you know if you do not automate this task then 90% of the member enrollment data had to be manually entered into n different product lines toggling between various number of applications. Now this could be obviously simplified with the help of automation anywhere by implementing a two step solution that is converting the XML data into an electronic application and then enabling the data entry from the electronic enrollment applications into the system. Coming to the test to check commercial claims the test to check commercial claims can be a very tedious task if obviously if it doesn't get automated. So it can be basically automated in two phases that is the first phase is to automate the screen capture process and the second phase is to automate the testing process of the claim and finally coming to the build healthcare products the process of building a package under a predefined insurance plan can be highly time consuming taking up to the maximum time for building an individual package. Now automation anywhere can automate this process by collecting all the required information from various spreadsheets 
and then to validate the collected information, the bots can match the extracted information to the business rules. And once if it is validated, then they can enter the details into the application. And finally, the application can be updated, right? So guys, these are the mainly three processes that can be automated in the health insurance company and thus reduce the manual workforce and also, you know, automate maximum of its back office processes. Now moving on to the next question that is consider a scenario where an employee's sole job is to extract data from an application generate reports validate those reports and finally update the data into the database. Now the question is can you elaborate on the process of automating this task? Well, the process of automating this task is really simple as you can see on my screen An employee can trigger a bot via hotkey to collect data from multiple systems. Then the employee can check for the generated results and then finally generate a report. After validating the report, you can update the data into the database and this will end your task, right? So this is a basic process of how you can automate this task. That is basically an employee can just start the task and then trigger a board via hotkey. After that, the board can collect information from multiple systems, check for the generated results, and then bot will finally generate a report and validate the same report and then finally update the data into the database, right? So this is how you know you can automate simple to complex tasks and make sure that you know employees can use their mind in a better way for a company. Now moving forward with our next question that is consider a scenario where a leading manufacturer of the mining and the construction equipment is facing challenges with its supply chain management which includes long processes processes prone to errors and also lengthy error detections. Now, how do you think the manufacturer can resolve this issue and simultaneously ensure that the costs are reduced, the customer experience is improved, along with the operational efficiency to increase? Well, from the question, it's clear that you know the client's motive is to establish the flexibility of technology support, provide enterprise grade quality, increase the speed of deployment of product, and also provide training and licensing models. So, automation anywhere is one such RPA tool which can cater all the needs of the client. So the process which can be automated is basically the sales order process, the operations related to the transportation and also tickets related to shipments. So talking about the sales orders, the bots can automate the process of searching the sales order and system, check all the details related to the orders, update the data into the application and also notify the user that whether the task is completed or not. Similarly, operations related to the transportation, the activities such as identifying recent failures, extracting the reason for failure, and finally notifying the related teams via emails to resolve can be automated using various activities in automation anywhere. And finally, coming to the tickets related to shipments, the bots can automatically create a ticket related to the customer query, and once the ticket has been resolved, an email can be sent to the respective client, right? So guys, these are the processes which can be automated. That is the sales order, the operations related to transportation and tickets related to shipments. Now moving on to the next question that is consider a scenario wherein the employee's sole job is to check for a claim which a customer might be asking and approve it if it satisfies the guidelines. Now, how do you think this task can be automated? Well, you can definitely automate this task by using the automation anywhere client. So you can create a workflow as you can see on my screen. An employee can trigger a bot via hotkey to collect data from multiple sources. After that, the system will auto approve the claims which satisfy the guidelines and later on the employee can look for exceptions found and resolve the same. So if there are no exceptions found, then the task end or you know, if all the claims are approved then also the task would end, right? So basically the workflow is, you know, the employee has to trigger a bot via hotkey and then the bot collects the information from multiple sources. After that, the bot basically makes sure that, you know, the claims are auto approved, which satisfy the guidelines and then the claims which have an exceptions, the employer would look into those exceptions and resolve the same. So that's how you can just automate this task. Now moving on to the next scenario that is considered a scenario where a company delivers hardware and software solutions to the world's largest corporations. Now this company had a manual process which involved more than hundreds of employees to validate orders against their validations. This process obviously required manual creation of templates for a customer order form and obviously creation of templates manually is obviously quite error prone, right? Now, how do you think the company can automate this process to avoid the manual creation of templates and also reduce errors? Well, the solution to this question is basically that, you know, the company can automate the processing of unstructured data with the help of IQ boards. So the IQ boards can allow the developers to add cognitive capabilities to the process and then it uses the cognitive capabilities to extract information from semi and unstructured data and also detects patterns so that the next time the pattern is encountered, the bot knows what exactly has to be done. 
So with the help of IQ boards, the company can ensure that you know it satisfies its customers and also improves troubleshooting and reduces the manual creation of templates. So that's how a company can automate this process to avoid the manual creation of templates and reduce errors. Now moving on to the next scenario. Now consider a scenario where an organization offers a wide range of health and social programs. Now to provide aid to the administration, the organization can use supporting documents to qualify various assistance programs. Now the main challenge the organization faces is how to get two specific programs to communicate with each other automatically. Now obviously if you think this has to be done without automation, then what would you do? An employee would take an information from relevant forms, look for the supporting documents in different system. After that, the employee would verify the information and provide it to the applying individual. Now obviously this task for hundreds of documents and for hundreds of customers seems tedious and time taking also, right? So how do you think the company might have resolved this issue? Well, with the help of automation anywhere again, you can build up a solution to bridge the gap between the employees and the customers. So an employee can get all the required information from the documents library and then launch the verification process with the help of hotkeys in automation anywhere. After that, you can also design a workflow to open forms on the employee screen and identify the relevant documents. Gather those documents from the document library for the employee and then the employee can use these documents to provide the information to the clients. So as you can see on my screen, this is basically the process workflow that you can use. So for example, if an employee inputs two forms that is X and Y which needs to be compared further, Automation Anywhere can auto select the fields from both the forms to decide and then look and verify the address across multiple documents in the document library. After the immediate comparison has been done, the immediate comparison can be shown to the employee for verification and then the employee can provide the information to the client. So guys, this is the basic workflow of automating this particular task. So guys, these were few questions that were completely scenario based. Now the next five questions in the section will basically consider of scenarios where you know you can actually automate the task on the tool and show to the interviewer. So let's start with the first question over here that is consider a scenario in which you want to move 100 files in a folder to another folder. Now what do you think the steps will be? Well the steps will be basically to open an automation anywhere client and then go to the files and folders activity. After that you have to choose the copy files action and drag it to your workspace. After that you have to choose the option folder since we want to move a folder from source part to the destination part. After that you have to mention the source part in the source section and in the destination part in the destination section. After that what you simply have to do is you have to save your task and execute your task and you'll see that you know all the files present in the folder in the source destination will move to the destination folder. So let me just show you how that can be done. All right. So I'm going to open my automation anywhere client. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new task. So let's open a new task and now let's say you know we go to the files and folder section. Now I'm going to choose the option of copy files. And then what I'm going to do is in the files and folders command, I'm going to choose folder. So what I'm going to do is I want my complete source folder to move to the destination folder, right? So I'm going to browse for the source folder. Similarly, I'm going to mention the path of the destination folder. So let's just mention the path of the destination folder. So as you can see on my screen, guys, this is the path to the source folder and the destination folder. And now I'll click on save. Now once I click on save and I save my task, let's say, you know, moving files. I'll just execute this particular task. So you can see that you know my task has been executed. Now I'll just go to the destination folder and you can see that you know you have a folder inside the destination folder that is the source folder and it has 100 files in it. So that's how guys you can move files from source folder to the destination folder. Well, these kind of questions are mainly asked to just check your experience with the tool. They can be either simple or they can be complex. It's completely based on how good you're with the tool and how many activities or commands that you have an understanding with, right? Now consider a scenario wherein you wish to automate the task of writing text into a notepad file. Now what do you think will be the steps to automate this task? Well, the steps are really simple. You first have to open the notepad window and then you have to drag and drop the insert keystrokes command into your workspace. After that, what you have to do is you'll have to just select the window that is basically a notepad window and then you'll have to mention what text you want to mention with which keystrokes, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just open my automation anywhere client again and let's go for a new task. Now over here, I'm just going to drag and drop an insert keystrokes command. Now over here, I have to select a window, right? So already I have opened a notepad file over here. So I'm just going to, you know, select that particular window. 
and then i'm going to mention the text that i want to mention with you know maybe two lines you know with some letters in caps lock right so for that let's say you know we mention hello all and then we want the next sentence to come in the next line so for that we'll mention enter so i'll type in enter over here after that what i'll do is i'll say welcome to and then i want edureka to be in caps lock so i'll just mention caps lock and then i'll mention edureka right and then what I'll do is I'll click on save. Now once I click on save, I'll just save my task again. Let's say, you know, writing text, click on save, and then I'll click on run. Now once I click on run, you can clearly see that, you know, automatically, hello all and welcome to Edureka have come in two different lines and Edureka has come in caps lock, right? So that's how you can automate the task of writing into a notepad file. Well, this was really a two line demo that I had showed you, but in industry level, this automation is really used to automate the task of writing text into different files and the text could be humongous, right? So that's how it is used in industries. Now let's move forward with our next scenario that is consider a scenario where you have to merge the data from many PDF documents into a single PDF document. Now, how do you think you can do this? Well, to merge the data from many PDF documents into a single PDF document, what you can simply use is you have to use the PDF integration activity and from this activity, you have to use the merge documents command. So basically you have to drag the merge documents command and in the dialog box that opens up, you have to choose the add option and choose all the documents that you want to merge. Now, once all the files are chosen, you have to mention the data of the output file which will consist of all the merged documents and then you can just check in the box if you want to just override the file again. So let's just do that. So I'm going to shift back to my automation anywhere client and then I'm going to create a new task. Now over here what I'm going to do is let me just show you which PDF files I'm going to merge. So as you can see in my sample PDF folder, I have three PDFs, right? That is receipt one, receipt two and receipt three. So I'm going to merge all these three documents and then put it into the output PDF file. So this is basically my sample output PDF file in which I'm going to merge all the documents into, right? So I'm going to shift back to my automation anyway client. Now I'm going to drag and drop the PDF integration command. So let me just search for PDF integration command and over here I'm going to drag and drop the merge documents command. Now in the merge documents command, I'm going to choose the merge documents and then I'm going to choose for add. So when I say add, so basically over here, I have to mention all the files that I want to be merged. So in the sample PDF file, I'm going to merge all these three files, right? So we'll have to select in an order to get it in an order and then I'll click on add. So you can see that, you know, my all the three PDFs have been added and in the output file path, I'll mention the output file. So basically I'll go for browse again, go for desktop and then mention output PDF and then I'll check in override file, right? I'll then click on save. Then I'll save the stars. Let's say, you know, merge PDF. I'll click on save over here again and then click on run. So you can see that, you know, my task is getting automated, right? So you can see that, you know, our task has been executed. Now let's just open that PDF file so that you understand how our documents have been merged. So as you can see, these are my different PDFs that have been merged together. So that's how guys you can merge PDF documents. So this was just for three PDF documents where well, you can merge any number of PDF documents that you wish to. Now moving on to the next question that is consider a scenario where an employee wants to perform various window actions such as opening a window, closing a window or resizing a window. Well to do that, you know, as I've told you previously in the session, we have a windows actions command that has to be used. So under the windows actions command, we have various commands like, you know, the closing a window, opening a window, or resizing a window. So I'm just going to show you to either, you know, close a window or open a window because I've already shown you how you can resize a window. So the steps are really simple. You again have to just go to the windows action command, choose the command and then drag and drop it to your workspace. After that, you have to choose the window, click on save and then execute your task, right? So let's just do that. So I'm going to go to a new task again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for windows action. So over here I have various options, right? So for example, let's say I want to close a window. So I'll just choose the option of close a window. I'll select a window. Let's say, you know, I want to close the window of output PDF that we just took. I just want to close this window. So initially you'll see that, you know, this window is open in my system. Now, if I just want to close this window, I'll just select that particular window, click on save and then save this particular task. Let's say close window and then execute this task. So you can see that, you know, my window has been closed. So that's how guys you can just use the simple window actions to perform different automation tasks related to the windows. Now moving on to the final question for the session that is consider a scenario wherein you want to capture an area of the screen. 
Now, what are the commands that you think you need to use to perform this action? Well, the commands used to perform this action are basically the capture area command. So this basically comes under the screen capture activity. What you have to do is you have to select the window, drag your mouse to your area you wish to capture and then mention the image location. So you can just mention an image location and then override the file simply, right? So let's just do that. So for that, I'll go back to my automation anywhere client again, choose a new task. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for screen capture under the screen capture activity. You have options like, you know, capture desktop, capture window, capture area. So I'm going to choose the option of capture area. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a window. Let's say, you know, I want to select notepad, right? So I'm going to select this notepad and then I'm going to click on capture area. Now, let's say, you know, I just want to capture only this amount of area. So I'll just choose that and then I'll have to mention my image location. So I'll just browse and let's just say I replace the sample image and then I click on overwrite file, right? So that's how you can do you just have to click on save now save your task again so let's just put capture image and then execute this task the task has been executed so let's shift back to our desktop and then choose the sample image so in the sample image you can clearly see that you know our notepad file has been extracted basically on the dimensions of what we had mentioned so guys that's how you can capture an area in automation anywhere so with this, we come to an end of the session on Automation Anywhere interview questions. I hope all of you understood the different interview questions that we discussed about. Now, I would just like to end the session by saying one thing, that the job role of RPA developer has been growing constantly in the market. And then if you're looking forward to upskill your career as an RPA developer, then it's a must that you should explore as many tools as you can and get good expertise in it. So I hope I was clear to you guys in this session. Now, apart from these questions, if you have any further questions related to automation anywhere, then please comment down in the comment section and we'll reply to you as soon as it's possible. Until then, that's all from our side today. I hope you found it informative. Thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!